Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Tool Chains for People in a Hurry. My name is Victor Rodriguez, and here is a nice presentation that I have for you. Well, the agenda for today is going to be dynamic linker for multiple architectures, um, new errors on warning detection, new eyes for deep learning that we offer also in the latest version of GLIPC and GCC. Let's start with dynamic linker for multiple architectures. First, the dynamic linker that we provide in GNU C library version 2.3, um, it's going to load optimized implementation of shared objects from subdirectories sub -directories in your GLIPC hardware caps directory on the library search. But, right? So the basic idea will be to check where you are running your, your application and then find the proper path where that library is. Right? Now, this story started four years ago. Four years ago, here is some slide that I presented in the Open Source Summit North America in September in Los Angeles. So in that moment, we were presenting this implementation of GLIPC 2.26. And the idea was that we were using the DL platform and DL hardware cap and CPU feature to do a transparent linker, to determine the platform and build an array of hardware capability names. And the idea was to add a search pad when loading these shared objects. In our mind was like in a smart octopus. The octopus decide, okay, I have a, a process and application to run, and let me check what kind of shared objects do I need and search for the specific path where that library is supposed to be according to the hardware where I am. In this example that we use at that moment was a library, was an application for C Blast that of course is gonna need to leave openblast.so. Now this, um, it's gonna go and search first in, in that moment in user lib64 has will leave openblast.so. And if it was not able to find it, said, okay, let's gonna try to find in another uh, situation, in another, in another place in the path, as we can see in the orange box, and go one level up, right, for, for something else, and, and try and fail, try and fail. What was the organization we created for the folders and subfolder at that moment? Well, we said, okay, we have user list lib64 has rule, and inside has rule, we could have also abx112 underscore one, and there we could put libraries that are compiled for using the register CDMM and also ABX 112 ISA. What about this? Well, this is the kind of instructions that are used for platform like Skylark and recently released. And now the, the important thing here is that there, that was the path. So in GLIPC, we're trying to say, hey, am I standing in a platform that has support for this ISA? Yes, okay, let's get a search in that. Am I uh, in another platform like Haswell? Okay, it's going to be a user lib64 Haswell and try to open the lib open CV, right? And these are some examples of the implementation that we did in that moment for those libraries. And we put them in the correct place. So when the application is trying to run, it said, okay, find the library according to the platform I am and share uh, and load the, the, the shared um, object with the proper instruction for this specific hardware. Great, and um, more about these you can find on a blog called Transparent Use of Library Package Optimized for Intel Architecture. And what can we improve from there? What was one of the things that we were uh, necessary improving from there? Well, the cycle was pretty much try to find the optimized leap, fail, and then try to find the optimized leap in another path, and then succeed, and then go for the next library, right? Because as you can see, when we don't have the, the leap open blast, like in this example, on a platform that has, has support or, or something similar, it failed and go one level up, one level up until it say, okay, user leap 64, leap open blast is where I found the, the, the library that at least satisfy my need of, of a leap open blast. So is this the optimized one? Maybe not, right? Maybe that find that library is gonna be easy. Not optimized for my hardware, but at least it run, right? So the GLIPC would not compromise the, the functionality of, of the application. It will try to find the optimal solution, the optimal share object, and if it fails, go to one level up, right? But that permutation increased the complexity to provide libraries optimized for a specific API, right? So that was the first problem. The second one, more overhead to process initialization due to the multiple file system access, right? And this, this, this came up as always in the open source to evolve and, 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 cry, and try to create new solutions and say, okay, 
glibc 2.33. The solution in glibc 2.33 is simpler, uh, simplifies search path that does not create subpaths, right? That's, that's important. So we will go into the hardware capabilities. And that means that, okay, imagine that now I'm gonna run this lib open CV example that I used it before, sorry, that I was using before. And it's going to uh, be run on top of a machine with AVX 500 support, right? Now, in that case, uh, the, the platform we're we gonna be running, it's gonna be this. So, this is an example of an S trace. Uh, by the way, this source code, it's available in a link that I put over here in the presentation, in the example, uh, with a proper Docker file that has the latest version of the compiler, the latest version of, of, of the linker, so that you can go and play on the platform that you have to see how to see behave, right? Now, it's gonna to try to find first the user lib64, uh, glibc hardware caps, x86-64 version four, or x86 version three, or version two. Now, what about this multiple version? Okay, so the glibc hardware caps for x86 was also set in this latest version of the tool chains. Now, the version two, which is close to Nahalem, it's gonna have instructions for SSE3, SSE4, SSE4.2, or S, you name it, right? But it's gonna be closer to those kind of, of, of features. Now, the version three is gonna have AVX2, AVX2, AVX1, AVX2, BMI1, BMI2, FMA, and other more, more. And the APX, the x86-64 B4, version four, is gonna have most of the 512 ISAT uh, necessary for, for, for these part, right? And this is a much more uh, natural way to cluster the instruction that we are using and much more natural way to also manage future addition of those things. Uh, here is the path, part of the patch that, we, that was added to the compiler because there is important. We also add support to build according to glibc Hurricane. One of the most used flags in the compiler is mRch equal, and you specify the CPU type. Right. Now, the, you can specify Haswell, Skylake, Nahalem, Ice Lake, the platform that you want for mRch in x86, right? And now, one of the, we also add the glibc hardware caps, which is gonna have the capability to say, okay, please compile mRch equal x86 version two x86 version 3 or x86 version 4. With that in mind, you can say, I want that my code to be optimized for these kind of instructions, for these kind of instructions, or for these kind of instruction, right? Now, how does it loop the object down of that generated? Well, GCC minus O3 F3 vectorize MR equal, in this case, to version three, which as we can remember, it's close to Haswell, which is gonna be trying to optimize for AVX, AVX2, FMA. And in this code, you can see that this line is gonna be pretty much um, targeted for that kind of optimization. And yes, it is. So we can see here that he's using YMM registers, was some specific instruction for Haswell. And when we compile to Haswell, because the question will be, Am I losing something in the object dome? Is it doing something different? Well, here is a basic example. Of course, there will be another yes, cases, but at least for this basic didactic, it is not, right? Because the, the exact thing that we compile for Haswell is gonna be the one that is generated when we specify for the other cluster of instructions, which is x86-64 version three. Pretty much the same thing, okay? So feel free to test it and, and use it. Now, what is the next thing to do about this? Well, before checking compatibility is, let's try to move to that because as software developers here at Linux, we also are um, in our uh, responsibility to provide the optimized version or, or, or to try to provide the optimized software according to the platform where it's gonna be running. So the tool chains provide more and more tools that help us to create that. From the dynamic linker that is possible to the tech, hey, where am I standing? My staying in a platform with this kind of ISA? Okay, let's go and get the shared objects that are, I guess, has the optimized. It. It's our responsibility to put the optimized libraries in that position. And the compiler make the things easy for us with this flag and say, you know, compile for this and put the result over there in that path so that the linker could be easily to get 
grab it and put it over there. Um, what about compatibility? Well, the TLS and previous Haswell file are still present to keep compatibility, right? But are gonna be removed in future releases. We don't know when, um, I don't have the specific date. It will be interesting to us in the Philips um, specific mailing list to check for that. But yeah, it's gonna be removed. So um, it's necessary to evolve to this part in this. Now, the other part I was gonna tell you is new errors and warning detection. Last year, I had the pleasure to present at Analyzer for the first time. And thanks a lot to all the compiler team in GCC and especially to David Malcolm here, because he is the one, and this is the team that was responsible for adding, since the last year, the first static analysis incorporated part of the compiler. So we don't have to go and worry about searching for other tools and, and, and so on. Now, it is included into the compiler. Why, code, what an stat, why an static code analysis is important? Well, help us to check the sanity of our code before running the binary, right? Before executing smoke tests or functional tests or stress tests. No, we can check the code and see if it actually matched with what it's supposed to, uh, or try to discover security features, functional box, or uh, security box, functional box, or even performance in some cases. Last year, there is a link for that presentation about some of the flags that was introduced, but this year, uh, there are two important news. F-Analyzer was completely rewrite it and recreated, so good news. Most of the bugs that was, were submitted are addressed and fixed, which is great. Thank you, David. And the third one is, it was added four new flags for our convenience. That are, uh, by, the, by the way, are enabled by default. Now, the first one, uh, which is very fun, it's about shifting, right? Uh, shift uh, for, from, from a specific variable that we have to the left or to the right, it's very fun and very useful. Um, algorithms can go, are based on shifting for multiplication, division, whatever you, your application needs, but shifting is something that we might use in our code. Now, sometimes we might commit the mistake of shifting to the negative number. And now when we compile just with GCC and, 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 and that's it, it will not detect this kind of thing. It will not detect it. It will let it go and run and fail during execution. But now we're able to, with F Analyzer to detect, and actually it tells you when in a specific GCC has the, the we have the code, the, the mistake in our code, the value that it has, and it said, well, you're attempting with a negative count for the shifting, so please fix it. <laughs> And uh, this is available in GCC 11. I provide also here a link to a Docker file with the source code for, of these examples and the compiler so that you can test it with your code or, or you create another image based on and that. So yeah, up to you and, and free for, for that one. Um, here is another one also for shifting. What happens if we have an overflow and attempt to uh, do a shifting greater or equal of the precision of the operand type. Here I'm doing something very, very ugly, which is do a shift of hundreds of thousands to, to the left of a chart, a little chart. Of course, it's gonna be an overflow. And now the F analyzer detects that part. And so, you know, something is very wrong and very horrible. Please don't do it. And, 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 and please go and fix your code. Of course, we can compile. The thing compiles. It, it's unless that we specify the older warnings are gonna be treated as errors but at least it, it, it compiles in this part, but it's providing you some warnings. Um, this is other one, diagnostics for um, when we try or attempt to write it through a pointer to a constant object. Here we have a constant and we have a, a pointer to. So we're trying to, to write to that constant through, through that pointer. Yes, the, the F analyzer is gonna tell us, you know, uh, that's something that you're trying to do. It might not be a really good practice of coding, so please fix it. Also, and this is something that I have done before and I have, uh, I'm not very proud about it, which is trying to write a uh, specific um, for a pointer to a string literal. So we declare a string and we, I want to move, for example, the, the, the first variable of that string to a pointer. Yeah, it, it's something that the compiler now is going to tell, hey, you're trying to write to a string literal here and it's not cool for that one. Um, new ISA for deep learning. Okay, the new ISA for deep learning, sorry. Um, we have two new ISA for, for deep learning here. Um, the, the BNNI and the AMX that we will cover in this presentation. 
The first one is the AVX 112 BNNI, or Vector Neural Network Instructions. Uh, it's an extension of x86, part of the Intel Advanced Vector Extension, part of the AVX 112. Um, it's enabled in Icelake, which was released um, a few months ago. So you're free to go and, and test it in the latest version of the Xeon, in, in, in this case. It provides four new instructions, uh, BP uh, Boss D, or uh, this is for eight int uh, variables, and this is for 16-bit uh, integer variables, right? Could be signed in this case, or it could be unsigned in, in, in the other case, right? Um, and these are the four instructions that are introduced. But where is this instruction coming from, and how do we start to, to work in, in, in this part, right? Um, the first thing is the major motivation behind the ABX 112 BNNI extension is the observation that many tight computational neural networks require two things. The repeated multiplication of two 16-bit values or 8-bit values, and then the accumulation of the result in a 32-bit accumulator. So we can see in a, uh, in, in, in a nutshell that, well, we're trying to multiply A0 times B0, A1 times B1, and then do the addition of these. Maybe extend it to more. Actually, the instruction is going to be extended to uh, A0, A1, A2, A3, and so on, but that we can uh, have, as you can see, it's a 16-bit um, variable, and it's going to be fitted into a 32, ba 32 uh, values of 16-bit in a 512 bits. The good thing is that you can use 60, 512 bits register, or 256, or 128, right? Uh, but the instruction, it's only available in some specific platforms uh, like Islet, that um, it's going to have support for either of the registers that you have, right? Now, with this in mind, we would say, how does it match actually to something like convolutional neural uh, algorithms, right? And here is a disclaimer, uh, and my, my field is, is not machine learning or, or deep learning, but I'm going to try to explain this with a basic example. So. In the figure, we have an RGB image that has been separated into three color planes, red, green, and blue. And of course, this is something very simple, very tiny, four times four uh, matrix, but you can imagine how computational intensive things would get once the image search dimension on 8K, right? And the role of convolutional neural network here is the important thing to understand, is to transform these into something much more easy to process, but, without losing the important information or important feature that are crucial for image processing, image, uh, image uh, prediction, or face recognition, or anything you want to do with your image in this case. So that, that's the part, right? Um, now, this is an animation that it's very at least illustrative for me, because here we have the red, the green, and the blue part. And what we see is a kernel channel, one, two, and three, which is not going to be nothing more than kind of a filter. We're going to try to apply this kernel into the uh, matrix. And the result, it's going to be added for red, green, and blue, because it's going to be a, a multi for that. But also, we have a bias that it could be a number. I don't have the specific uh, offset of what, what would be a proper bias for some, but no, that's, that's definitely for a deep learning um, expert. But the important thing to notice here is that we as compiler, um, we can see that, hey, there is a pattern here. So you're doing a matrix multiplication here, um, and then you're adding the value of each one of them, and then adding another one that maybe you define to generate another matrix, right? As a result, you can see here in the animation. So that's, that's pretty much interesting. How can we change that to simple instructions? Well, it's pretty much what we're doing. We're doing a matrix multiplication, adding the result of each one of them. Here we can extend it to three, four, maybe, in this case. And also add another value that we could define externally, like that bias, to have the result. So wait a minute, you're changing the full logic of the algorithm to something like this. It's pretty awesome. So how do we handle this new instruction in my code, in my library, that I can, that I can handle by myself? So here it is. Um, first, the, the, the point here is to create a rate that feeds and loads data. Uh, the second one is load the data into the race and, and, and for, to the, from the arrays to the register. And this is important because the instruction is register to register instruction. It's not memory to register. No, 
it's registered to register instruction. Actually, when we read the documentation of the instruction for the BNNI instruction, it said that it's going to take three inputs from three different uh, registers. The register could be 128, 256, or 512 uh, bits. That needs to be registered. So we need to load the data that we have in our arrays into the register. Great. Uh, there are some specific instructions that the Intrinsics library provide for us, like loading from a specific pointer into uh, for a specific uh, location in memory into the array, which is good. We need to be careful about the, the, the range and, and size and, and other things to be aligned and things like that, but nothing impossible. Here is a link to a GitHub repository where I have the source code, the Docker files, the make files, and also the compiler. And even if you use the one that we were using previously, or um, and if you want to compile from, from, from master in, and put it into your, your Docker file, important to highlight. To check the object DOM and also to finish the compilation, you might also need to have the latest bean utils, right? So it's, it's like full set. We need the compiler and the bean utils for this. How do you compile? That, that's, that's the funny part. Uh, pretty straightforward. GCC minus O3 and March equal Ice Lake server. Uh, the source code, and it's going to find immediately the intrinsics and said, okay, I need to translate this into a specific instruction. The compiler, after passing the um, lexical, syntax, semantic, and all the parts that you know from the general compiler, arriving to the optimization, we will skip the optimization in this part because by the library, already know the compiler what, what specific instruction these need to be translated. So when we do the operation, the point two, it said, okay, I'm going to execute the operation, in this case, with A, B, and source. Source in A would be, in this case, like in this example, we have um, A bits, we have, uh, sorry, eight value, and a value of eight, a value of one, and a value of three, right? So we could have, in this case, the, 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 the operation. So let's, let's go and see what, what results it have. According to the documentation, we had said that it multiplies A0 times B0, A, A1 times B1, and A2 times B2, A3 times B1, B3. And then add the four of them uh, together, so four times eight, in this case 32, and then add it to the, whatever we had in source, which is the CC string, giving the result 35. And as you can see, we do more, we would perform the operation in, in, in this fact that was important was that I put exactly the same value to see that it matched. It's basic example, just for the didactic purpose to prove that I compile, I can manage the data, and I get the result that I need. I know it's very basic, but it was just for didactic purpose. And yes, as I said, um, you just compile with MRH equal eyes, and it just works fine. You might wonder, where, how do I test if I don't have a hardware? In a minute, at the end of the slides, I'm gonna talk about it. Um, now, this is a history line about the microarchitecture chains that we have seen. Uh, for example, ABX 112 BNNI, this is what we have now, right? Then um, there was another evolve there in the Intel Deep Learning Boost technology, which is ABX 112 BFLOW 16, and then AMX. But we're going to cover it's about AMX. Now, the Intel Advanced Matrix Extension, it's new x86 extension, right? And the Intel AMX is standalone to create two new, two things. New instructions, but not to handle something different. No, no, to handle new registers. And these are gonna be the first time that we produce a two-dimensional register. I know, super strange, but let's gonna see. And those registers are gonna be called tiles. What is a tile? What is an Intel AMX tile? Pretty much, it's like when you are in your kitchen or in your bathroom, like, like a tile, uh, um, and you see it, right? or in, your, in the roof. Uh, and so it's going to be a two-dimensional array. The matrix uh, register files, which is like a tile, are uh, the developer has the capability to manage eight tiles from TMM0 to TMM7, right? Each having a maximum of size of 16 rows by 64 bits column, which gives us a total of one kilobyte register, right? A one kilobyte register, right? and eight kilobytes for the total of the eight uh, registers that we have. Now, each programmer, you don't have to use the full one kilobyte uh, register to these. No, no, no. One, as developer, can configure the, the tile 
to the size of what we want. Like for example, in this case, the tile was configured for two times four, or times um, four, uh, three times four, and the accelerator instructions that are provided also in in in, in the new in new um, instructions, it's capable to say, let's gonna make the multiplication of the instruction dot product as natural as we do in the piece of paper. Yeah, it's gonna happen in the hardware now, so it's gonna be pretty, pretty straightforward. Um, what kind of operation can we perform? Well, that's a really great question. The first thing is we need to configure the, with the polyp, which is going to be a register that helps us to configure the size of the register of the tile. Um, what is going to be the size of it? Here I provide an example. It's the link. It's also in the same place. Uh, with the way to configure that polyp for, for, for yourself. Now with that we configure the polyp, you also have specific instructions. You can uh, yes, these are for configure the, the polyp, and, and also you can add to the polyp, you can store, you can make it, you can release, you can make the, the, the tile or the register zero. These are for tile and configuration, right? These are for, for tile and configuration. And this is, okay, now that you have configured tile, what do you want to store in that tile? Do you want to store in eight variables or do you want to store B plot 16 variables? Well, and once you store the proper ones, what do you want to do with those? Do you want to, uh, because you don't configure what you want to store, you just configure the tile, but what kind of operation do you want to perform? AMX in eight or AMX B float 16, right? Um, and you can have sign it, sign it, sign it, unsign it, unsign it, sign it, or unsign it, sign it pairs according to the dot product of int eight uh, that you want to perform. On the other hand, when you try to, if it does not apply when you have the float 16 tiles, because you're going to perform the dot product of a P float 16 uh, data in this case, right? So we have configuration data or operations, as I mentioned. Now, this is a full example in C that performs actually, and here I have multiple things. I have for, um, sorry, uh, B float 16, uh, I have for sign and sign it, sign and sign it, uh, and so on, some basic configurations. And the thing is very, 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 very basic. It's taking actually from the GCC main branch as part of the test that it was uploaded. And you can take it as, as a reference for, for, for your examples. Now, the main question, how do I test it if I don't have the hardware support, right? My hardware is very old. I don't have those instructions. Should I, um, how, how, how can I develop for, for those? Don't worry. There is something called Intel Software Developer Emulator. And the Intel Software Developer Emulator, it's very easy to use. How easy? Well, you download, here is the link, you decompress, and you use it. So you can say, okay, I have, um, here I have my SD, and this is the binary that it provides, SD64. You specify the platform. You might wonder, um, AMX tiles, where is that going to be? Well, it's going to be in Sapphire Rapid. Sapphire Rapid, an incoming platform from, from x86. And I can start to test my code to take advantage of those things, like, Okay, here is the binary that I create, and we can set dash dash AMX in the, um, for, for the binary that I created. And it's going to run. It's going to take the, the, the binary and, the the, the, and, and emulate, in this case, the instruction that it's not provided by your hardware and make it run. In the end, you will be able to make it, uh, to, to, to see how those instructions behave. And if you want to see the internals of how many times those instructions were executed and from what a specific point it was called in, 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 inside and much more, you can see with uh, a dash mix uh, option that it's gonna generate an output file. And that file is gonna give us, for example, here, number of times that that instruction was generated. It's very useful because we can compare to our previous loop and say, hey, um, how many times did you call this thing? And you can put it, for example, here in my code, I put it like a thousand times. Said, oh, it was called one, a thousand times, so it makes sense. And, and more analysis that you can, you can make on that work. Now, this is the, the, the end of the, of, the, of the tool change for people in a hurry, the latest uh, features were added. Uh, I wanna thank you so much, and as a closure, this picture is in purpose. I want to highlight that the tool chains are not anymore just um, a tool or a hammer to help us to create more new software. It also helps us to discover what is coming in terms of new ISA, in terms of new features that we will be able to use, like 
provide our software in a proper way, optimize it and load it immediately in an optimized way for the user. Or even also help us to detect when we have a bug in security functional performance by static analysis with the same compiler. And there are much more features that I encourage you to go and check in the release note of the latest feature of PCC. The community is out there for us to help us and they are working very hard for providing new and cool features. So I, I, I encourage you to go and like in this picture, go and search what is new and enjoy the, the journey of using the new and latest tools. Thank you so much.